Hey there, this is T Big Man over here at TechAndAllThings.com. And if you're watching this video, you should really be following me on Twitter.com forward slash T Big Man so you can find out all the things that I like to tell the whole world about. Today, what we're going to talk about is Linux Mint Grub Bootloader and how to get it back when it goes away. Now, the scenario I'm describing is I had a working system dual boot with Windows 7 and Linux Mint 9. Uh, the problem happened when I had a small Windows 7 hard drive. It was 120 gigs. I ran out of space. I, I needed more room. I got a larger hard drive. I used um, Acronis, uh, the latest version of Acronis, or Cronus, Acronis, I mean, you know, say it however you want. To uh, I booted off the uh, recovery ISO and went into the tools, and I said, okay, I want to clone this Windows disk over to this blank disk. Everything's going to be great. Well, it saw like all the partitions on my my Windows drive, you know, for Windows 7, there's the two partitions, but there's also like this little tiny partition on the very front of the drive that was recognized as unknown or unrecognized, and that did not get copied over to the new blank disk. And what that partition was, was my Linux Mint Grub bootloader. Everything was fine, everything transferred over. What I was left with was a drive that did not boot. There was no Windows bootloader, there was no Linux bootloader. I had I had nothing. I just had, hey, you know, it just a constant cycle of hey OS not found, reboot, hey OS not found. What I did initially just to to make sure that my Windows environment was good to go is I booted off the Windows 7 disk and I recovered the Windows 7 bootloader and I was booting into Windows and everything was fine. Then the task was okay. Now, now that that's done, I want to reinstall Grub, you know, so that I can get access to back my Linux um, distribution. So, and that's where that's why you know that's where I was like, well, let's let's do it. Like, how do we do this? You know? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, first, uh, let's switch over to my desktop, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you the tools you need and how to get them going. And we're going to switch over to this view all right now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to you know a working computer and get yourself to www.supergrubdisk.org all right and on the uh, this is what the page looks like on the uh, right hand side here you're going to download the CD-ROM select one of the mirrors and this is the one right here the super grub disk hybrid 1.98 okay you're going to download this burn it to a cd so you can boot your system off that cd All right now i've already done this i've already downloaded it and here here it is right here okay now i set up a uh, kind of like a test environment inside of virtualbox uh this says windows xp pro um that's fine it doesn't really matter what it's called I mean this is a a dual boot environment with Windows XP and Linux Mint uh, it's not gonna really matter what situation you're in this will work uh, you're gonna boot off that super grub disk I have it defined right here so we're going ahead and start and I'll show you what this disk looks like and what you need to do with it Welcome. See there? It says welcome. Now, now by default, it's the very first option. You know, detect any OS, right? Just, just let it, let it do it. It's going to scan the disk looking for bootable operating systems. Depending on how many you have and how fast your machine is, you know, this could take, you know, some time. So now it found. Look, it's got my Linux. It found my Linux, and it knows about my my Windows right now um, what I want to do is actually boot into my my Linux my Linux environment you know so so this disk is grub and it's letting me boot into my Linux environment and when it comes up I'm gonna show you the commands you need to type to restore your grub bootloader with all your different uh, operating systems listed in there Alright, so it's getting closer. Here it is. Okay, there's my login screen. 
and I'm logging into Linux. And right now you're like, oh, heavy sigh of relief. You know, I've got my Linux environment back. You know, so you know, worst case scenario, you can just keep this disk around, you know, and and use it to boot. You know, it's not a permanent solution, but it's definitely a, a valid workaround. Okay, so I'm I'm in. I'm I'm in Linux. It's already done. I'm gonna go into the terminal. All right. And I'm gonna to get to. Um, I want to. I want to make myself a super user for for a while. So I'm gonna type sudo uh, minus i to uh, get that going and put in my password. Okay. So now I'm gonna be super user for a while. All right. And then I'm gonna type these commands here. First, I'm gonna type grub dash mk config and it's going to go through and scan my drives looking for bootable environments and when it's done we're going to type grub install okay and we're going to tell it to put it on the the root of the very first drive in the system which in mine is dev sda all right and hit enter and it's going to take a couple seconds and hopefully if it's uh, when it's done it'll come back and say hey I did it and I didn't find any problems okay installation finished no error reported alright now that that's done I'm gonna run the command update dash grub and that's gonna go through and build my grub.cfg file and put all my um, all my detected operating systems you know it's gonna put them in that menu list and you can see right there it found Linux and it found um, my my Windows XP you know and if this was uh, Windows 7 of course it would found Windows 7 and so on and at, th at this point you know you're done you know you type exit out of super user environment exit out of terminal um, you're gonna go ahead and log out shut down and when it's finally down you're going to remove the super super grub boot CD right um, which I'm going to do virtually because this is a virtual machine go to the storage pick it and I'm going to say hey it's an empty drive now click on OK and I'm going to start it back up so you can see um, that it made it all the way back to the grub bootloader with all my OS is listed the Linux environment and the Windows environment and we'll keep in mind virtual machines are not as fast as real ones all right look at that a Linux Mint grub bootloader is installed there's Windows and there's Linux Mint 9 so um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see switch back over to this view and uh, I'd like to thank you for watching please uh, visit my website techandallthings.com make sure you're following me on twitter.com forward slash tbigman and until next time, this is T Big Man saying, oh yeah!